the room. I've been wonderful. <laughs> Haven't we done the most amazing things? My guess is that every one of us in this room have taken risks. Every one of us in this room have made history. When I was a kid, trying to work out who and what I was, as I began to discover that I thought I might be a lesbian, God asked, where were my role models? <laughs> who on earth could I find? The irony was, I was doing A-level English, and I had Virginia Woolf on the curriculum. And I fell in love with her, and I tried to write like her. I thought it was just wonderful. Did anybody tell me she was bisexual? <laughs> we lie to our children every day by a machine. Go into schools, and they absolutely, the assumption is that everybody is heterosexual. Everything that we read in the books, every teacher, every child, every governor, every parent, apparently they are all heterosexual. What a lie. And we have to change that. We have to challenge that. We have to do something about it. I worked for many years in schools, and Schools Out gave birth to LGBT History Month. And we gave birth to it because Paul Patrick, my then co-chair, who alas has passed on, and I could see the power of Black History Month. It forced teachers to be more creative. It was an outrage that it did force them, but it did. And I always thought, well, if we had a lesbian gay or sexual trans month, maybe that would do it. When the government finally decided to come up with the 2000, well, in 2003, they talked about the Single Equality Act. And they talked about the public duty, which would then mean that schools, public institutions, libraries, museums, would have to take cognizance of lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans people and have to actually take cognizance of the discrimination and prejudice and do something about it, do something about the equal opportunities of lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans people, and do proactive work to enable LGBT people and heterosexual people to get on. So I thought, great, here's the month. And here we can do it. We'll give them a tool. The irony is, we are now seven years in. And of course, as you know, the Equality Act's public duty for LGBT people doesn't happen to April. <laughs> However, people have grabbed the month that last year we had over a thousand events all around the country. From local authorities, museums, schools, to pub quizzes, to LGBT people doing truly exciting and wonderful and creative stuff. I had no idea when I gave birth to this how it would flow out and what would happen. And the creativity of LGBT people and straight people, let's make it very clear, there are allies out there doing wonderful things as well, has been phenomenal. For the next two years, we are focusing on sport. Again, I thought, God, it's because I do something about the number of in sport, so I said, okay, let's do sport, having nothing to do what it would look like. <laughs> However, some really exciting things are happening, including a roller palooza. Do you know what that is? I didn't know that. It's people on stationary bicycles with times and with two of them pedaling like this to see who can win. <laughs> so I was thrilled when I began to to Richard Riser and say, come on, join the game. We've now got the beginnings of LGBT History Month. Let's have Disability History Month. So November the 22nd to December the 22nd is now Disability History Month. Last year it was launched. This year we now have March. June, we have Gypsy and Traveller Month. January is Holocaust Memorial Day and has a whole potential to do a whole lot of other work. And obviously in October is Black History Month. So we are now building this diversity calendar. And of course the other thing is, when we celebrate Black History Month, as Maya said, we celebrate black women. We celebrate black disabled women. We celebrate black lesbians. When we celebrate LGBT History Month, go on the website every month. You will see links to all the other websites and reminding us that we are bearing all our wondrous and marvelous diversity. I think LGBT History Month grabbed in the ether before Cameron did the whole concept of the big society. Because the month went out there and hundreds of people grabbed it and played with it. I think it also the potential, as, as Jean, my partner, has just reminded me, is that I think we've actually got the big sister society. And we can actually do something very powerful with the big sister society. We can grab the diversity calendar, we can make not only March effective in putting women out there and putting lesbians out there, but we can also grab every month 
and we can make every day a day that we celebrate women in all their marvellous, wonderful, and fabulous creativity. <coughs> there have been amazing women out there that I've now discovered and are important to me. Ethel Smythe, yes. suffragette, <laughs> musician, who gave up two years of her life as a musician and went out there as a suffragette and got, of course, arrested in the course in Holloway Prison and wrote the marvellous March of Women's Soul. Frida Cole, bisexual woman, fabulous painter. Barbara Burford, who died just recently, fabulously important woman in my life. Black poet, writer, dramatist, and did masses of work around equality and diversity. Jackie Kay, who is with us now, fabulous um, writer. Maud Allen, now who knows about Maud Allen? Fabulous lesbian dancer, mm -hmm. same time as Oscar Wilde. Everybody knows about Oscar Wilde. <laughs> Check out Maud Allen. She's really exciting and interesting. So we have a wealth of women out there, black, disabled, Asian, old and young, and a lot of what I did has become history, but it's not there in our schools yet. I mentioned reading common in schools and they say, what is? <laughs> God, that's how I hate this. <laughs> I have missed nothing. <laughs> Year on year, because you are going to make it happen. Thank you very much.